I felt really good about it. We um, used today to concentrate not so much on the schematics and the competition, but it was essentially a, uh, a dress rehearsal, for lack of a better term. So we had our position meetings, uh, brought the team out, put them on the bus, did the dog walk. Mm -hmm. So went through that whole process, uh, walked down, and then went through our uh, pregame routine uh, from stretch to everything that we do prior to kickoff. Uh, ran them off the field, actually ran onto the field, how we're going to do that, and played two 15-minute running quarters, uh, our travel squad versus our non-travel squad. Um, you know, had some really good competition there and, you know, working with the coaches for the first time, you know, headsets, communication, substitutions. We had special teams all within. So, uh, you know, I'd rather have those things uh, get ironed out now than on the first. Uh, concluded that with a, a two-minute drill and an overtime session. Uh, you know, took a little bit of a break and then had uh, special situations, offense, defense, and special teams. So kind of went through some all-ball scenarios that you may not practice during the course of camp, but you'd be glad that you covered when the season hits if they ever if they ever pop up. So I was very very pleased with that. Can we assume that the travel squad beat the non-travel squad? Uh, yes, <laughs> safe, to, safe to assume. Did the guys have a little pep in their step on the, being in the stadium? Yeah, the time? yeah I, I had a little pep in my step. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, any time that you excuse me, have an opportunity to go into the stadium and uh, you know, be under the lights and, and you know, to the young guys, there were, you know, some big eyes, even though there wasn't, you know, much consequence to the, to the performance outside of the competition aspect of it. But uh, heck, it felt good for, for me to be in there, just trying to imagine the, the sound of the bills. Coach Shute told us the other day that. Uh, Good. Coach, Coach Shute told us the other day that uh, he thought his depth chart was pretty much set on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. Do you feel the same uh, for the offense? Yeah, there's always some moving parts. I think for the for the most part now. Uh, we'll re reconvene as a uh, coaching staff tomorrow and, and meet with all three phases and kind of put our initial uh, depth charts together. Uh, and then, you know, through injuries or guys performing, you have, you have an opportunity but uh, for, for those things to change. But, but for the most part, I think we're going to have a good idea of, you know, where we're at heading into practice one for Stephen F. Austin on Friday. What's Michael's story status with the program? Well? Michael is uh, suspended indefinitely for the program right now. Uh, is there kind of a program in place for him to regain normal status or? I mean, I could, I could give you the, I mean, essentially when we, uh, you know, I'd rather just meet this out in front of it. When, when uh, we were made aware of the incident involving Michael on, uh, you know, Saturday morning, uh, we or I uh, imposed a, an immediate indefinite suspension of Michael uh, and he hasn't practiced with the team since Saturday. Um, and we, you know, we talk to our team all the time about our decision making and, and our conduct off the field and you know, certainly that's something that, that we stress every day. And, um, you know, this, uh, you know, the discipline of this will be handled accordingly. What's the rotation of cornerback? Cornerback? You know, right now you're looking at Cam, uh, Jamal, uh, Tyler Williams, and um, the fourth corner on the other side. So uh, most Smitherman on the other side, yeah. Have they kind of taken to the new things they've kind of shooting? Oh, absolutely. I think you know, there's only so many major ways you can play quarter, quarter, half, or cover three, or man to man. So to me, it's really about the, you know, the way it's you know put into a package and the way it's called and kind of situational stuff. But I think uh, you know we've got you know corners and D backs with with uh, you know very good ability, and when you couple that with the fact that our, our defensive line and our front seven provides a tremendous pass rush. You know, ability to uh, you know pressure the passer. You know, I think that 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 uh, it, it adds to the ability of our guys on the back end. You mentioned earlier in the preseason, kind of wanting three or four wide receivers to kind of separate themselves yeah. and be that first unit. Are you any closer to that now than you were two weeks ago? I think we're going to have a you know a starting three going in, and then just like anything else, the uh, repetitions for the two will be on a rotational basis. So based on the proximity, I don't know if that's the right word how close number two is to number one. You know, if we think the number one guy, you know, deserves to play three series to one or four series to one, or, you know, we think the one and the two are close to each other and that may be a one to one or a two to one situation. So as we continue to go through the Stephen F. Austin uh, game plan, it won't, won't be until, uh, you know, Thursday or Friday next week where we determine the rotation. So the depth chart will be set. The rotations won't be set till later next week. And kind of the same question for the tight ends. Is there kind of a, a status? Set there. Yeah, yeah I, I'd say there's a, a firm one and two, or really one A and one B, and then kind of a three. And you know, I think we're we're very you know fortunate. You know, it's a luxury to have you know a bunch of guys in that position come in and compete and do a good job.
Coach, you've said that this land scrimmage is also valuable for his defensive staff, headsets, communicating. Mm -hmm. Do you see the same thing today, and how, do you, how would you evaluate the play calling, the getting the message in, things on the sideline, that such? Well, well <laughs> the way it was structured, mm -hmm. it was the, the maroon offense and the maroon defense versus the mm -hmm. white offense and the white defense. So I was calling all the plays for all the offensive snaps, and he was calling all the defenses for all the defensive snaps. So mm -hmm. it wasn't like there was a between series mm -hmm. where I was just looking what the defense was doing. Mm -hmm. So. That's what we'll, we'll watch the film and kind of go from there with that. Coach, you said the other day that Stephen Ngoke got put on scholarship. Is there anybody else that you were able to put on walk on wise in those scholarships? No, Stephen's like a Swiss Army knife. I mean, he's <laughs> he's great. He can do a bunch of different things and, you know, play either safety position. He's on a bunch of special teams and, you know, great kid, great grades. And, you know, he, he has been put on for a while. I, I just – I'm not one of those guys that's going to, like – you know, drop a scholarship letter and a football from a hot air balloon and make a big scene of it and have it filmed. That's kind of just not my deal. You know, he came into my office. I told him he's on scholarship, shook his hand and announced it to the team. That's you know, just what that is. But no, we have not put any others on. Does that put you at the full 85? Sir? Does that put you at the full 85? Uh, no, we got one. Yeah. Will, will you use it before the team? That, that's to be determined. You said one of your goals during training camp was to get your team to be able to respond to adversity. Do you think that, you know, once the course of the season hits, you guys are ready to do that? It's a good question. I, I think I think we've improved in that regard uh, from spring to fall camp to now, and that's why I wanted to make it one of our points of emphasis. And uh, you know, certainly the adage of showing your emotions without being emotional and not just being able to handle adversity, but being able to handle prosperity. I think a great uh, example of that was yesterday in practice. We had you know two two-minute drills, and the defense did a great job. You know, uh, you know, didn't allow up the points, got off the field, and. You know, they were all fired up and jumping around, and the offense was kind of hanging their head. And I just use that as a great teaching moment. So, you know, we can't be on a roller coaster. We can't be too high. We can't be too low. We got to find that middle ground emotionally. And, and that's not to say we're not going to play with emotion, but there's a difference between, you know, uh, playing hard and being being out of control. And I think we need to, you know, make sure we're towing that line of, you know, pushing the envelope, really competing, being a team that's got a lot of personality and emotion, but, you know, is never out of control. How do you feel about your, where your offensive line is right now? I feel good. I think Marcus Johnson's you know, a tremendous O-line coach. You know, we got guys up front that are, you know, I said before, we're probably tired of hearing it. You know, we got a lot of size, a lot of athleticism, great physicality, great mentality. You know, behind those five starters, you probably got three or four guys that are, that are pushing them and, you know, working for playing time and reps. So, uh, and they're battle tested. I mean, getting to go against this D-line every day, I think it's going to prepare us for, for really anyone we face. The story being out, that would be kind of in question right now. Who, who kind of steps into that role that second team? I mean, there, there's a bunch. What Coach Don, Johnson does, which I think is great, is he cross trains the guys. So we, you know, got guys who are who are guards working at center and vice versa, and then you have some of your guards bump out. So, uh, you know, with that second line, it's not necessarily one guy goes out and then the second guy goes in. It's the next best available interior lineman. So uh, to say who it will be, you know, at this point is probably, you know, a little. Uh, Presumptuous, I guess, but uh, our, our thought process as a team, we talk about this all the time, is, is next man in mentality. That if we lose somebody because of an injury or, or another reason, the person that replaces them is going to do as good or better of a job. So, you know, that's football and that happens. And, you know, if someone's out and the, the guy, tell our twos and threes, you're dang one play away. So you're, you're, you better be ready. On the subject of cross training, you said you do that with wide receivers. Yeah. Is, there, is there a time in the preseason where that stops and you let people settle into one, or is that an ongoing process throughout a season? I think on a Friday, it'll probably stop to a certain extent. But there are guys that are earmarked that can do all three positions. So those guys will get reps. So Jesse's a guy that can do all three. There's a couple other guys who can work at all the positions. And some guys are better suited for either playing outside receiver or slot. So it'll be probably one or two guys that continue to get the reps all over, the, say, across the board. Is Austin Williams another one? That's yeah, he's one of those guys. I think he's better suited as a slot. But you know, in a pinch, I think he could play outside. At Penn State, Saquon was obviously your Featured back for obvious yeah. reasons, but is that kind of the system that you like a featured back, or can you see a situation where Harris and Kylan will almost split carries? Excuse me. I mean, ultimately, we're going to do what's best for the team and best for the offense for us to produce and score points. I think historically, if you look at it, you know, uh, you know, Saquon the last two years has, has carried a majority of the load. Uh, Chase Edmonds, now who's with the Cardinals, uh, did it for us at Fordham. Carlton Koontz was was my starter there as a first year. I think he was a 300 carry guy. Uh, but when you go back to, uh, you know, UConn, uh, Jordan Taubman in my last year there as a coordinator, I think he was the Big East Offensive Player of the Year, he, he kind of had that 300 carry thing. But the year before that, 
uh, Jordan Todd and Andre Dixon, uh, they essentially split the carries, and I think they were the only two tailbacks in a non-option-based offense to both have 1,000 yards in the season. So there is a precedent set for splitting the carries. It may, be not, be, it may not be something that I necessarily prefer, but if it's at that instance, it was for best, what was for best for the team. When you watch this team practice, do they have the, the same mental habits and they carry themselves like successful teams you've coached before? We're getting there, yeah. And I, I think really the, the one fall goal of you know, response to adversity and prosperity and you know, talking about the little things and the small details and the cultural aspect of it, I think that's the thing that we've been working on the most and trying to uh, you know, emphasize the point that it's not just about us having good players, not just about us putting them in a position to be successful, but all the little things that we do on and off the field. Uh, you know, you fall back on that preparation. You don't rise to the level of your 